Hello and welcome to another Scardcast Battle Report. Today we have the third game of the, well, the fourth game technically, the third recorded game of the Dark Olympiad at 1500 points versus bum 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 Matt. He has tabled me once before. <laughs> and today is rematch time. We are playing Hill 0.25, which is an Astronomicon mission. Now, instead of a big hill in the middle of the table, we have a cathedral. The mission objective is simple. Each table quarter counts as an objective. At the end of the game, you can capture it with no enemy units contesting. Except the cathedral also counts as a table quarter itself. So there are five objectives to gain in this mission. We have deployed. I chose to deploy first, and I will now choose to go either first or second. And I will choose, and I'll, we'll come back for that in a second. And this is what Matt has been painting his army to look like. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Sam Hahn, Windrider host, with custom jet bikes that he got off of a website somewhere. Uh, that look really, really cool. And then the Fire Dragon. In reserve, of course, there's the same list he used last time. So four units of six Reaver jet, Eldar jet bikes with two cannons in each, an Autark with a shard and a banshee mask, five fire dragons in a wave serpent with hollow fields and bright lances, um, two, three double cannon vipers, two units of two war walkers with bright lance scatter laser, and six shining, five shining spears. Uh, as well, with an Exarch, with hit and run, I believe. And my unit, and my army, the Dark Olympiad. Deployed, we have a Beast Pack, two Beast Masters, two Razor Wings, five Chimera. Deployed with the Farseer, who rolled on Divination. Uh, so he has Prescience, Foreboding, Misfortune, and Perfect Timing. Uh, eight Witches in a Raider with the Succubus. I rolled plus one weapon skill for my combat drugs. Eight Helions, eight Witches in that Raider there. A Ravager with Night Shields. And two Venoms with uh, with five Warriors and six Reaver Jet Bikes. In reserve, I have two, three Eldar Jet Bikes and a Razor Wing. So before I start rambling any further, um, I will choose to um, go first. And will Matt seize the initiative? Sure. He will attempt to seize. On camera, will he seize? <laughs> He doesn't. That's his third one in a row for things like deployment and whatnot. We'll be back right after this as the Dark Olympiad spring into action. The Dark Olympiad surged forth into the cover of the cathedral, uh, getting out of range of a lot of guns. We had the Reaver jet bikes boost into this ruin to block as much line of sight as possible because of the walls. Two Venoms moved up the flank fired into this Elder jet bike unit, killing one member as Matt made some good saves. The Ravager and one Raider fired into the Wave Serpent, putting two hull points on it. It's got one remaining at long range. In the Psychic phase, I did Prescience, my Ravager, and I foreboded uh, the Helions, where the um, Farsia now moved, as well as the two units of witches are now behind the cathedral. So we're moving, oh and then the beast pack moved and ran into a supporting position. Now we're moving on to Dark, well oh, Eldar sorry, turn one. Let's see what the Samhan warhost does next. The two Eldar moved through and tried to shoot through this door into this raider and failed to do any damage. I passed all my cut saves. The Autarkan unit and the Vipers did a sweeping flank maneuver boosting into the Dark Eldar zone on this side, and the Bright Lance on, well, everything shot into the Ravager, blowing it sky high for first blood. And now we're moving on to Dark Eldar, turn two. I have a Razor Wing to show up on threes, and I have Eldar jet bikes to show up, and they do. 
everybody shows up ready to fight. We'll be back after. Well, the reserves showed up. Razorwing blasted, killed a few jet bikes with four missiles, and then the Eldar jet bikes showed up, put a hull point on a Venom a Viper, who was misfortuned by the Farsia, who jumped into the building with his Helions, losing three of their number. They fell back, losing another two of their number. So uh, now they're falling back, because the Helions are very scared of dangerous terrain. Uh, <laughs> the Beast Pack moved up. The Venoms tried to rend into the Vipers with their Strength 1 against Armor 10, and uh, yeah, it was it was just more of an experiment than anything, now that I can do it with the rending misfortune. It didn't pay off, but I think it could, if done properly. Both the Raiders fired into the Jinking Wave Serpent, didn't do anything. And, in a feat of glory, the Witches charged into the two... Eldar jetbike units, throwing a blind grenade that clipped both units, blinding both units and charging in to l killing one and losing one for a tied combat, saving them from retaliatory firepower. Now we're moving on to Eldar, turn two, and we have reserves to arrive. Warwalkers? Warwalkers. Both of them will come in. They both the show up with the Autark. Spears? They um, will not show up. And bikes. They will not show up. So the two units of war walkers show up to the fight. War walkers showed up on either flank. This unit blew up the venom. Well, erect it. The guys got out. They are fine. The other war walkers blew up the the uh, raider with the witches and only killed one in the explosion. The snap shooting serpent put one hull point on that raider. In this combat. Each unit lost two model, uh, one model, and they did not flee, meaning the witches are stuck, while the vipers opened up on the beast pack, blowing it to smithereens, leaving one little chimera left behind. And in d dangerous terrain, once again dangerous terrain taking casualties, one cannon from that unit died as well with the Autark. So now we're moving on to Dark Eldar, turn three. We are fully committed. We have to see what we can do before the Eldar table us once again. Three. We had the Farsi and Helions rally. Blaster uh, cab lights got out. Together with the Eldar jet bikes, they fired and killed one Venom and forced them to jink. So um, by Venom, I mean Viper. The Venom fired into this fire unit, killing the closest model, which happened to be the cannon, Razorwing and Raider. Uh, Raider fired into the Jinking Wave Serpent doing nothing, and the Razorwing fired two lances into these guys, putting one hull point, killing a scatter laser. In combat, I killed one more model from the back unit with my witches, losing none in return. They held, which is good for me. The Hecatrixen unit that were back here jumped into the raider that moved out here, um, and these Cavalite Warriors moved up one hull point and blew off a scatter laser off one of the war walkers. Now we're moving on to Eldar turn three and we have reserves to come in. Uh, wind riders. They arrive. And spears. They arrive. We're we'll back right after this. We had the wind riders move up, shoot the three man unit, destroy it. Everything else in this flank tried to fire at that raider and it put one more hull point on it but it jinked out of the way so it's got one hull point left. The wind riders that just arrived fired and exploded the venom that was here and nothing happened over there at all. Now we're moving on to Dark Eldar turn four. Uh, in combat of course my witches finally ran down both units and uh, they consolidated towards the war walkers so we're moving this is going to be intense. The two cab light warriors, the Razorwing, fired into this unit of Eldar jetbikes, killing three of their number, and they did not fall back. The That nothing happened there. We had the Farseer try and charge into the Fire Dragons after the Snap Shooting Raider put its last hull point on there because the Snap Shooting Raider was awesome. The witches charged into the war walkers, did one hull point and stayed locked in combat. The Helions charged into the vipers, put one hull point on the viper, but the vipers are now fine and ready to act normally. And the Hecatrix, I mean the succubus and her unit, 
charged in and wiped out the Shining Spears, gaining their first pain token. Now we're moving on to Eldar, turn four. This is definitely being an interesting game so far. The Fire Dragons killed my Farsia. The jet bikes moved up, fired and missed because they had jinked, they need to snap shoot, and then lost one of their member to snap shooting, overwatch, charged in, killed nobody, that tie, that combat is tied. Nothing happened over there. In combat, the Autark charged in, blew up the raider, killing three of the witches, including the Hecatrix in the explosion, who then, the Hecatrixes killed one walker and lost nobody, and the two Venom, the two Vipers, and the Windrider jet bikes, all shot at the unit, killing all the witches, leaving only the Hecatrix alive, while the Helion, scared by the explosion of the raider, decided to fall back after losing two of his buddies in the explosion. Now we're moving on to Dark Eldar, turn five. This could be the end of the game. Uh, nothing happened there. These guys shot into the fire dragons and did nothing. Uh, nothing happened there either. Then we had one witch die getting stomped on by a war walker and she did nothing which is good and my hecatrix challenged the <laughs> the autark putting two wounds on him with her power lance and saving herself against the shard of anaris which would have killed her instantly and now we're moving on to oh and my razor wing flew off the board moving on to eldar turn five we'll see what can come of this game it's been a lot closer than the last one and El Dark Eldar don't seem like they're going to be tabled, which is nice. We'll be back after this. Um, Reavers busted out of combat. Then we had the Fire Dragons murder two. They held this combat. I killed one jet bike. They killed no one as I passed two of my saves. These jet bikes moved into this quarter to capture it. The Vipers stayed in this quarter. The Hecatrix, I mean the Succubus, impaled the Autark in her on her spear in the, the combat. This combat was a slap fest, and the fire dragons have moved into the central table quarter. So, as it stands, primary which is table quarters, one, controlled by the Eldar, two, this entire section here, controlled by the Eldar, this one back here, I believe, is contested by that jet bike, and this one back here is contested by the witch, and this one back here contested by the succubus. So we're rolling to see if the game continues. <laughs> Little kiss from. <laughs> does it continue? It does. The succubus made a long charge to charge the vipers with her strength five power lance with furious charge, which is her warlord trait, and failed to do any damage. The reavers blade veined the fire dragons after they got shot, and they are falling back. The witch is still in combat with the war walker. And this is still a slap fest. So <laughs> moving on to Eldar, turn six. Um, we had the Vipers blast my succubus to oblivion, holding this table quarter now. The witch and <laughs> war walker still in a slap fest, as well as this combat here. The fire dragons rallied and got on with their three inch movement. Yeah, they're they're con uh, contesting the center objective, and these jet bikes moved back, holding this quarter. So, if it ends on turn six, it is an Eldar victory. And because it matters to Matt, we're going to let Matt roll again. <laughs> <laughs> I trust that it'll happen. And right. it goes on to turn seven. <laughs> the little three-man unit ran over here to help bail these guys out of combat. They consolidated into this table quarter here. Meanwhile, their friends consolidated that table quarter. The Reaver jet bikes charged into the Fire Dragons and the Hammer of Wrath hits killed them and they consolidated back into the objective. And the One Lone Witch finally killed the last War Walker. So we're moving on to Eldar. Turn seven. What will happen after this? And it came down to the end of the game. The Vipers moved into the Cathedral, contesting the objective from the Reavers, blasted the Witch off of that table quarter. These Reaver jet bikes moved up from back here, blasted into this unit that had the pain token from killing that one jet bike, killing three, and they 
passed their morale test and then they failed their charge, meaning that they were not able to move into this table quarter to contest, to force a draw. So, at the very end of turn seven, the El Dark Eldar Olympiad has pulled a win from out of their backsides. And this was an incredible, fun game. Matt, what was your general overview of the battle? Um, you finally got stuff into hand-to-hand -hand combat, and I realized that it's pretty destructive. Um, your succubus was just walking through units, so uh, she did really well. Um, I think I I overplayed my jet bike squad, and um, I made a mistake with my shining spears. I should have kept them in a support more supportive role than where they were. Yeah, because of not being able to take out that raider, maybe get a jump on the. Um the Shining Spears, and my succubus went to town with her Power Lance, with her Furious Charge, which was her uh, Warlord trait, Strength 5, AP 3. She's killing five jet bikes a turn when she charged in, and then walked into the Autark and murdered the Autark after passing a couple of uh, uh, lucky and vulnerable saves against the Shard of Anaris that would have killed her outright. Well, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, this was a test mission for uh, Astronomicon Toronto that's being held in Milton I think this year and make sure you stay tuned to the tactical corner share the video if you like it like it if you really like it and favorite it if you super super like it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already since you might forget to click that little sub button just check it okay have a good one cheers bye Hello and welcome to another Tactical Corner. This game was a rematch of the Dark Olympiad versus Matt Eldar Windhost. El Matt's first turn was fantastic. He turned the flank on me and I knew that I had put myself in a position behind that cathedral to really kind of pick one side or another. Now I had to kind of go towards the Vipers in order to deal with that situation. Um, I got very lucky that a lot of my units got stuck in combat for a very long time, which uh, meant that they did not get shot at for the longest time. Um, this also meant I was able to maneuver and, and position units um, that would then threaten the rest of his army later in the game. By capitalizing on a few key mistakes the map made, like leaving his shining spears so close to my uh, succubus, it, with the you know units she just went on a rampage killing stuff that she needed to kill now Matt had this game both turn 5 and turn 6 the fact that it went to turn 7 I was able to pull it out of my rear end was just a bonus